Trip Talk NFL recap show, Mason Viner and Jack Rothenberg. On a Tuesday, uh, wrapping up last week quickly, Jack, just to hop into it. Really, really great week around the league. A lot, a lot of good games that not a lot of people expected to be. Yeah, starting off with that Washington football team game. It would suck to see Joe Burrow go down with that season ending uh, knee injury, but great team win, and I'm looking forward to Thanksgiving Day. Yeah, and I think a lot of fans are around the league. Uh, Ravens and Titans was a great game. Chiefs and Raiders on Sunday night was a good game. Last night, uh, Tampa Bay and L.A., really, really good games around the league. And then some upsets. The Cowboys topped the Vikings. Uh, The Broncos beat the Dolphins, and we'll get into all that as we move through it. I just mentioned the first team that we're going to kick it off for on the AFC side is the Ravens. Uh, Now in trouble, playoff hopes. eh, They're kind of in the balance, but an easy schedule will help uh, Lamar and company in, but now six and five after the overtime loss to Tennessee. Yeah, I think you got to start worrying about them. I think you got to start worrying about them just a little bit. But like you said, that schedule is going to be a big part, like play in their favor big time as they play. They'll play the Bengals, the Giants, Cowboys, and Jaguars down the stretch, which I think will earn them one of those uh, wild card seeds. But it's pretty alarming. You lose to the Patriots, then you come back, you think that they're going to be ready to play, then they lose in overtime to the Titans, then they have a big matchup, hopefully on Thanksgiving night against the Steelers. I don't know if they're going to end up playing that game with all the COVID uh, issues, but they, they got to start playing good football or else they could have a quick exit come January. Yeah, and, and you just mentioned the COVID concerns now for the Ravens starting to pile up. Looking at, again, looking ahead, the Jaguars, the Bengals now, uh, they could have been a challenging game, but without Burrow, uh, I didn't think Finley looked right on Sunday. Uh, but I'm confident that Zach Taylor, they'll look, he'll look a little bit better against the Giants this week. Uh, but you're right, the schedule will push them in, but the AFC is a really tight race, and, and that kind of takes us to the team that won that game on Sunday, the Titans. They're in a battle against the Colts for first place in the AFC South, and I'm not really sure. Both of these teams heating up a little bit. The Titans trying to get things started going, but Indianapolis just finds ways to win games. Yeah, the Colts won this first matchup on Thursday Night Football a couple weeks back. And I think it's interesting because the Titans' plan on offense is to get the run game going with Derrick Henry and then do play action off of that with Ryan Tannehill. But this Colts defense, this front seven, is very good at stopping the run. So it's hard for them to get the run game going and then get it over the top with Tannehill. So it's going to be a great chess match that you're going to see with the coaches on on Sunday with this game. I It's going to be interesting to see what the outcome of this game is because, like I said, the Colts won. So if they win again, they'll, they'll have own the tiebreaker and most likely win the division in the end. Yeah, and I, I do think so. Derrick Henry, though, is starting to look good, especially near the end of the game. He just has that next gear that kind of pushes them through. I like the Titans. I like the Titans in the first time these teams met, but I do like them coming off that win against the Ravens, and that will keep that interesting. The other two teams in that division, really irrelevant. Uh, The Texans, even though they looked a little bit better, they knocked pretty much knocked New England up. We'll get to that in a second. And the Jaguars, who were in kind of the tank for Trevor Pool. Consulting engineers. In the past five years, our organization has completed over 1,300 projects in the U.S. and abroad, including many structures at the University of Maryland. For structural engineering and materials testing and inspection, call Meyer Consulting Engineers. Moving on now to New England and the AFC East. New England pretty much done with the rare, rare Belichick loss against a bad Texans team. Yeah, we were talking off air. This is probably the first time that the Patriots haven't made the playoffs in both of our lifetimes, which is just kind of crazy to think about their reign of success. And now, now it's kind of just like done, which is wild to think about. But that Texans team, like you said, they don't normally beat a Belichick run Patriots team. And I, I really don't know what happened. Cam Newton, he hasn't been playing well recently. And that was shown on Sunday. But I think the biggest uh, standout from that game was Deshaun Watson. He showed how great he can be with his accuracy and led them to a win against the Patriots. Yeah, and, and the Texans are kind of picking up things, uh, picking up the pieces of the puzzle after Bill O'Brien was phased out there. Uh, that kind of takes it into the AFC East. The Dolphins with a huge loss, especially if they could have gotten one with the Ravens uh, loss there, they would have moved up to 7-3. and three. Instead, they're at that 6-4 and four pool, kind of pool mark there with the Raiders, the Ravens. Uh, Tua, he got pulled out of the game, little injury concern. 
do you think – I mean, they're going to stick with him, but what's next for the Dolphins as they try to make their push? Yeah, that was probably the biggest uh, surprise from the weekend for me, that Broncos upset against the Dolphins. They do have an easy matchup against the Jets this weekend, even though the Jets played the Chargers pretty close. I think they're starting to play better. It should be an easy week for the Dolphins to get back in the win column. But I think this defense and special teams has really helped out Tua, and that's why you've seen the Dolphins win. So I think this defense is to get back to playing great football, and it'll help Tua. And then I think Tua will evolve in this offense and hopefully get better, and maybe they'll make make the playoffs in one of those wild card spots. Yeah, and the Bills kind of now at this point have it on lock in the AFC East, and and that kind of takes us through to our kind of question of the day. Who either wins or loses first? The Steelers, they kind of have an easy road going the rest of the way for possible undefeated season. And the Jets, who, well, just can't find a way to win a game. I thought it was going to be this week. I, I will admit that. I thought they were going to beat the Chargers, but it didn't happen. Uh, do you think there's a path for a 0-16 Jets and a 16-0 Steelers? Or do one of these teams find a way to both lose and or win? Yeah, both both are hard. Going 16-0, 0-16, both are hard to do in the NFL. And the Steelers, they have a, a easy, pretty easy schedule down the road. They play the Ravens this week, which will be a t- tough task. And they'll play the Bills in a couple of weeks. But this Jets team, I think, like you said, they played the Chargers pretty close. I think they'll end up finding a way to win, the ga- win a game. They play the Dolphins this week, which some would say is a chance for them to upset the Dolphins. And they'll play the Browns which the Browns, you never know how they're going to come up, come up and play. And then week 17, they'll play the Patriots. And who knows what anyone's going to be fighting for at that point. And I know they're trying to tank for Trevor, but I think that they'll, they'll come out with a win before the, before the Steelers lose a game. Yeah, I would say that week 17 against New England is their best chance to do. So they got really close uh, the last time. The Browns are probably going to be playing every team on there schedule from this point on we'll be playing for something the Raiders well starting off with the Dolphins on Sunday then the Raiders Seahawks Rams Browns New England the only team on there that's not going to be playing for anything that's probably their best chance and then the Steelers uh they kind of have the equal in a different way kind of thing they do play a team like I know they play Washington who's playing for something but isn't great for Pittsburgh uh the road's getting a little shaky as they've found a way to play some close games I don't think a lot of people would have thought they take on the Ravens, Washington, the Bills, the Bengals, the Colts, and the Browns. So a similar kind of story. The Ravens are playing for something. Washington is uh, in competition. The Bills are are a strong team that's trying to kind of extend their lead playing for seeding. The Bengals aren't really going to put up much of a fight, but the Colts and the Browns, that Browns game, another one that I'm kind of targeting – if they're 15-0 and 0 at that point, I play – if I'm Coach Tomlin, I play my starters going for the perfect season. But you don't really know these days with, you know, trying to hold guys out for COVID concerns along with the just normal injury concerns, what that game will look at. But Browns and Steelers, I think week 17 uh, is your best shot for these teams to either lose a game and or win a game. Uh, the Bills is one that I also would think may have the chance to uh, do it against the Steelers. Yeah, and uh, now moving from the AFC East to the NFC East, we have that big Washington football team, Dallas Cowboys, Thanksgiving Day game. One, who do you think is going to win that game? And two, who do you think is going to come out on top on this in this wild NFC East? So, and not to sound like a homer, which both of us are Washington football teams uh, fans, football team fans, I, I, I still, it's starting to grow on me, Jack. I, I don't know about you. I'm starting to like it. I, I'm, I do not like it. Go Red Wolves. That's what I want it to be. All right. Well, I, I think they win. And somehow, and I think I told you this, Jack, I know I told Jordan, Bruce, and Wayne it, but Washington will be winning this division come Thursday night going into the weekend. Uh, I'm not sure the Giants take on the Bengals, so maybe the Giants will be leading the division going into Tuesday because the Eagles and Seahawks are on Monday. Uh, I like Washington. They're a three-point underdog. A lot of people are buying into Dallas suddenly after they beat Minnesota, but Washington, I'm giving them the edge. Uh, Alex Smith to Terry McLaurin's a good connection. Cam Sims, a guy that I've been begging them to throw the ball to for years, has kind of come on as a secondary wide receiver. And then on the defensive side, Chase Young kind of woke up after having some down weeks, made some big plays. And, and, and that defense, I can't really tell if they're good or just good enough to uh, keep them in games. But whatever the case is, they're doing – 
uh, just enough to kind of stay in the race at three and at three and seven. I cannot believe I'm saying that, but a team that's three and seven uh, is is approaching a possible playoff berth. Yeah, I'm gonna have to roll with you on this one. I'm gonna go football team over the Cowboys. I don't really know how I could ever pick the Cowboys, but I'm gonna go with the football team. And I just I always like to take a step back, especially now that Alex Smith is starting. Everything that he's gone through, I think it's great that he's been able to come back, start this game, especially on Thanksgiving. Just great for him. And, and also Ron Rivera, who battled cancer, and they'll both be coaching, playing this game. I think it's just great. And I, I'm always, I'm going to always hold out hope that they're going to come back and win this division. So I, I'm going to go with the football team to win, win the division. I know a lot of people are going with the Giants. Last week, I could not be more wrong. I'm, I'm changing my entire thought process on Carson Wentz I don't believe in him at all anymore after that game against the Browns I think it's pretty much between for me the football team and the Giants we'll see how the Giants play down down the stretch of the season they have the two game uh they beat the football team both times they've played so they have that tiebreaker so it'll be interesting to see but as a football team fan I'm, I'm gonna go with them winning the division yeah and then our kind of other main topic for the NFC is who gets the joy of playing the football? I mean, not the football team, but the NFC East winner uh, round one, that wild card race really starting to get uh, really close here after Tampa Bay uh, gets knocked off by the Rams, giving the Rams a lead in the NFC West, now leaving Tampa Bay, uh, the Cardinals, and the Seahawks kind of battling it out for whoever's going to grab that wild card spot and get that, I guess, coveted road game at either, you know, all four of the NFC East teams that are in that mix. Yeah, I think it's going to be really interesting to see who gets that fifth wild card spot because it's basically going to be a, a walk through to the divisional round. The Bucks, the Bucks aren't in that situation right now. I think they might get there. There's also the Rams, like you said, the Cardinals, the Seahawks. I think it's going to be one of those NFC West teams that falls into that fifth spot and eventually plays the winner of the NFC East. I think there's just too many good teams there. I think the Bucks, they're so inconsistent. They're going to drop a couple more games towards the end of the season. I think either the Rams or the Seahawks. I think one of them two are going to be at the top of this NFC West. I think whoever doesn't win is going to fall into that fifth spot and play the NFC East winner. Yeah, I definitely agree with you on that one. I'm not thinking the Cardinals, uh, and I've been saying this repeatedly over time now, they're just not there yet. And I really like Arizona. I think Kyler Murray's a really fun guy to watch. I think they're a really fun team to see play. I'd love uh, if they were in the playoffs. But with the Seahawks and the Rams are just further on, one in their coaching progression, their system, uh, is more finalized. You know, they have a lot of long-term players with Wilson, Goff, uh, quarterback, and I think it's going to be one of those two teams. For Tampa Bay, I'm starting to agree with you on that one, Jack. They're just not that good. They find ways to beat bad teams, and a lot of time, especially now in the NFC East, that's good enough, or in the just NFC in general, uh, that's good enough for them to possibly steal a playoff spot. But teams like New Orleans, the Rams, uh, Green Bay, even though they – blasted Green Bay they're just better than them and for Tampa it might be a quick trip to the playoffs yeah and Tampa I think they're 0-3 or 0-4 in prime time this this season and come playoff time every game is prime time so if they continue that trend it's going to be an early exit for them and then finally uh, Thanksgiving weekend huge football weekend what are you thinking for the games uh, on Thursday specifically I know we already talked about the football team we both think they're going to win uh, Texans and Lions starts it off not the most appealing game to many. I'm going to go with the Texans on that one. I was talking about Deshaun Watson earlier in that game against the Patriots. I think he's showing how great he is with his accuracy and how he can move out of the pocket. I think he's going to be too much for this Lions offense. And Lions just got shut out by the Panthers. So I don't have any confidence in them to win this game against the Texans. What about you? Yeah, that was my most surprising result from last week, and I didn't bring it up, but the Lions getting shut out after the win against Washington. Who knows what goes on in Detroit, but it's, it's something special. It's a special place to have, have weird year after odd result after odd result. Uh, I like the Lions, actually. I think Stafford kind of bounces back. They've had a rough set of Thanksgiving Day games the last two years. Last year, David Blau, the Purdue quarterback, uh, was their starter on Thanksgiving. Uh, they did stay in that game, though. I don't think they won. Uh, last year on Thanksgiving. I like Washington, as I already said. And then in the nightcap, great game. Uh, I'm a little disappointed the Ravens have some COVID concerns, but uh, I think Pittsburgh wins and, and Baltimore's kind of on the ropes at six and five at that point. Uh, playoff hopes starting to um, see a little bit of trouble before the easy part of their schedule pops up. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Steelers in that nightcap. I, there's too many COVID concerns with the Ravens, like you said. And 
who knows if that game's even going to be played. It might get postponed, might get canceled. We don't know. But I'm going to go with the Steelers. I think the defense, their Steelers defense is too good. And it's just going to – Lamar Jackson isn't, hasn't been playing as well as, as we're used to. And I think that's going to do it for our topics. As always, Thanksgiving weekend, great weekend for football. Happy Thanksgiving to you all. And, of course, thanks for watching. We'll be back on this show next Tuesday, breaking down everything that happened and maybe some more clarity around the league. But who knows? Uh, it's been a crazy year, and we'll see how this weekend plays out. Thanks for watching.